Active component brigades of the U.S. Marines are deploying toward a key dam site in the Saudi desert, intent upon control of this strategic location. To counter the threat, MEC forces are advancing their own mobile brigades to blunt the U.S. spearhead. This rough desert terrain contains a mix of terrain types, requiring the utmost in tactical flexibility by both US and MEC soldiers. The ultimate objective of both sides in this battle is to gain control of the entire Cooper Dam sector. This video is going to be a map analysis of the Cooper Dam map from Battlefield 2. We'll be looking at the real-life inspirations for the map, as well as the environment and layout of the map itself. We'll also be going over the flag points and equipment that both the USMC and MEC forces have at their disposal here. Looking at the description for the map, it says that Cooper Dam is located in the Saudi Desert. So there are a few dams in Saudi Arabia, as well as some of the other countries around it, but none of them have the name Cooper Dam. And the ones that are here also don't look like Cooper Dam either. They seem to be smaller and more basically built dams by comparison. The design of Cooper Dam is actually based off the Hoover Dam in the United States, which is on the border of the states of Nevada and Arizona. When we take images of both dams and put them side by side, we can definitely see the similarities. Both dams are quite large and are known as curved gravity dams. And the large intake towers on the map are the same kind that the real-life Hoover Dam has as well. Due to the construction happening on this map, we can hear the sounds of construction equipment as well as the sound of the wind from the mountainous desert environment. The number of control point locations varies depending on what size version of the map one is playing on. Cooper Dam has three map sizes, a 64 player, 32 player, and 16 player. I will be focusing on the 64 player version, as the 32 and 16 player versions of the map are the same, except that they have less control points to capture due to their reduced play space and smaller player count. But I'll denote on the screen which control point locations are available on each versions of the map as I go through them. I'll quickly mention that the 16 player version of the map has one control point that isn't on the 32 or 64 player versions, and that is the upper dam point. This is a conquest assault map, so it is similar to a standard conquest map in that the goal is to reduce the other team's tickets to zero in order to win. However, one team acts as the attacker and another acts as the defender. On this map, the USMC are the attackers and therefore have an uncapturable main base to start off from. They also start off with more tickets as well. And the MEC are the defenders, automatically controlling all the capturable points on the map. The 64 player version of Cooper Dam has a total of 7 control points. The USMC main base is called the Abandoned Huts, while the capturable MEC control points are the Supervisor Base, the Material Station, the refueling station, the construction site, the lower dam, the power station, and the intake. And the one neutral control point on the map is the bridge base. The large bridge next to this point can be destroyed using explosives and will require an engineer to repair it.
The abandoned huts act as the uncapturable main base for the US team on this map. Players on the US team can either spawn here at the start of the match, or they can spawn at an airfield east of this location. I'll be treating the airfield as if it's its own control point, due to how far away it is from the abandoned huts. The main entrance to this point is along the dirt road heading west to the bridge, but one can also enter and exit the point in the south along the riverbed and around the mountain to the bridge base. There are eight huts and three shacks here. These three huts can be garrisoned by players and all have the exact same interior layout. Two of the buildings also have steps by them that can be climbed to get to the Stinger AA emplacements on top of them. For the commander's support structures, three LW-155 artillery guns are located on the hills near the west entrance. As for the vehicles that spawn here, an MH-60 Nighthawk transport helicopter spawns at the helipad, and a DPV spawns next to it. One LAV-25 APC and two M1 Abrams tanks spawn southeast of the helipad next to one of the garrisonable huts. Another DPV and an M6 linebacker spawn next to the two garrisonable huts. As for the stationary emplacements, one LMG and a BGM-71 tow AT launcher are at the sandbags at the west entrance and another tow AT launcher is near a large shack at the south entrance. And as mentioned previously, two Stinger AA emplacements are on top of two of the huts. For the airfield, the main entrance is to the south, along a road that leads to the abandoned huts. There are two hangars and one small building here. For the commander's support structures, the radar station is between the two runways, and the UAV trailer is east of it. Two DPVs spawn near the main entrance, and an AH-1Z Viper attack helicopter spawns at the helipad. One FA-18 Hornet fighter jet and an F-15 Strike Eagle spawn in each of the hangars. As for the stationary emplacements, one LMG and one AT launcher are at the main entrance, and a Stinger AA launcher is right next to the radar station. The bridge base is the only neutral point on the map. Its name comes from the large, destructible bridge above it. It is also the closest and easiest point for the US team to capture at the start of the match. There is only one main entrance via the road to this point, and that is in the southeast, where the road splits to either go up the mountain or down into the riverbed. The three buildings here are the two small guard outposts and the large utility structure. This structure can be accessed by players from the bottom of the riverbed, using a ladder to climb up to the flagpole. The building can also provide cover inside it as well. No matter which faction controls the point, one FAV will spawn near the main entrance, and if the US team controls the point, then an M1 Abrams tank will also spawn at the main entrance as well. And no stationary emplacements are found here. The Supervisor base is the first MEC-controlled point on the map. Before the battle, this base probably acted as the headquarters for the construction supervisors to oversee construction activities at the dam. The two main entrances via the road to this point are in the east and west. There are three buildings, two bunkers, and a radio tower at this point. This building here can be garrisoned by players, and the same type of building is found at other locations on the map. No matter which team controls the point, one FAV will spawn next to the garrisonable building. If the MEC control the point, then a T-90 tank will also spawn near the FAV, north of the flagpole. As for the stationary emplacements, one AT launcher is at the east entrance, and one LMG is located in each bunker.
The material station is the second MEC controlled point, west of the supervisor base, and is where some of the materials used for building the dam are located. This point can be accessed from all sides, with roads leading to it from the north, east, south, and west. There are five buildings and a large carport here. There is a garrisonable building here next to the flagpole. No matter which team controls the point, an anti-air vehicle spawns under the carport. One FAV and one tank spawn west of the flagpole, and no stationary emplacements are at this location. The refueling station is the third MEC controlled point, and is on the other side of the large bridge, west of the bridge base point. This would be where construction vehicles go to refuel, but is now being used by either the US or MEC forces to fuel their vehicles on the battlefield. The point has two main entrances along the dirt road, one in the east and one in the west, both of which go up and down the hill which the station is located on. The only building here can be garrisoned by players. The point also has a bunch of red barrels all around it. These barrels can be blown up and damage or kill anyone standing too close to them. Regardless of which team controls the point, one APC and one FAV will spawn here. As for the stationary emplacements, two LMGs are at the east entrance of the point, one on some sandbags and another on a large box. The construction site is the fourth MEC controlled point, located on the east side of the dam, south of the refueling station. The point has two main entrances, one that goes north down the mountain toward the bridge, and another that goes east along the road, but splits to either go down to the intake or across the dam itself, or also take a winding road down the mountain as well. The only structure here is a large building being constructed at this site, hence why it is named such. The flagpole is located at the top of this building, and it can be climbed using stairs inside of it. There are also ladders on the back of the building that allow players to climb it from the exterior. No matter which team controls the point, one anti-air vehicle and one FAV will spawn here, and only one AT emplacement is located next to the structure. The lower dam is the fifth MEC controlled point, and as the name suggests, is in the middle of the dam at the lower portion of it. This point can be quite difficult to capture due to the location of the flagpole inside the dam. However, it does offer great protection against bombing runs from planes. The only entrances here are to the north and south. Regardless of which team controls the point, an FAV and an APC will spawn by the flagpole. But an attack helicopter will spawn at the helipad right above the point, at the upper portion of the dam. Only one AT launcher emplacement spawns outside the dam north of the flagpole. The power station is the sixth MEC controlled point, and is on the west side of the dam. This station would provide power for the dam and its construction. The point has two entrances facing south, but one goes up a ramp that can split and either go across the dam toward the construction site, or go west along a road which leads down the mountain to the material station. And the other entrance goes down the mountain to the intake. The only two buildings here are this garrisonable building next to the flagpole, and the power station building itself. No matter which team controls the point, one FAV spawns in front of the large ramp, and a tank will spawn under the dam road, south of the flagpole. 
and no stationary emplacements are located here. And finally, the intake is the 7th MEC control point, and acts as the capturable main base for the MEC team, since the commander's support structures and airfield for the team's planes are located here. The point has three main entrances along the dirt roads, one in the north, east, and west. There are six buildings, two hangars, four guard towers, and a large carport. This building next to the flagpole can be garrisoned by players. For the commander's support structures, the UAV trailer is located next to the helipads, the radar station is between the runways, and the three D-30 artillery guns are located on the east side of the base. No matter which team controls the point, one tank will spawn next to the flagpole, and one FAV and one APC will spawn under the carport. Another FAV spawns next to one of the intake towers, and one more FAV spawns next to the hangars. One attack helicopter and one transport helicopter will spawn in each of the helipads. And if the MEC maintain control over the point, then one MiG-29 fighter jet and one SU-34 ground attack jet will spawn in each of the hangars. As for the stationary placements, one AA launcher is at the end of the runways behind the carport and one AT launcher is near the crane at the north entrance. And one LMG each is located in three of the guard towers. I couldn't really find any miscellaneous locations that really stood out to me on this map, so I will just mention that the map has seven cranes throughout it. The crane at the top of the dam can be climbed, and if one reaches the top of it, they will be at the highest point on the map. Of course, every crane can be climbed, and they all make great locations for snipers to pick off enemy troops on the ground below, as they fight their way across the battlefield of Kubra Dam. So I just wanted to quickly say thanks to everyone who watched the video, and I hope that you enjoyed it. I plan on covering all the maps for Battlefield 2 in this series, so if you want to get notified of when the next video is uploaded, you can subscribe to the channel, or click on one of the cards on screen to watch a previous video. And thanks again for watching, and hope you have a good day.